Hello, welcome back, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Netflix original show, Jessica Jones. For all you that don't know, Jessica Jones uh, is part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So Netflix have acquired the rights to cover uh, a few Marvel characters in uh, Netflix original TV series. Uh, we've already seen The Daredevil, which was my first ever YouTube review, uh, which got me started on this. Uh, we have Jessica Jones, which I'm reviewing now. Luke Cage, who is a character in Jessica Jones, has been given his own TV series and will be appearing shortly. And there are talks that Iron Fist is finally going into production. So the synopsis of Jessica Jones for you is going to be no spoilers. I don't like to put any spoilers uh, in my reviews. I like people to go and actually watch shit for themselves. So the TV series starts off exactly the same as it does in the Alias comic books. That was a comic book about Jessica Jones. We see Jessica Jones uh, starting her own PI investigation service called Alias Investigations. Straight from the start we can see that Jessica Jones comes with a lot of baggage and she is a broken individual, uh, has alcoholic tendencies, likes to grab the bottle uh, first available to her, doesn't matter what it is, the young lady seems to, to live on alcohol. We find out that this is due to a traumatic time that Jessica went through at the hands of her villain for this series, Kilgrave. I won't go too much into the Kilgrave character yet, but if you want to check him out, it's best googling uh, the Purple Man Marvel, as he's known in the comic books. Just when Jessica feels that she can get back on with her own life and start her PI investigations, Kilgrave makes an appearance and seems to be after her and wants back in Jessica's life. Jessica then uses her PI skills to try and track down Kilgrave and put an end to his villainous spree. Uh, along the way she comes across some more characters that we'll be talking about next. So all in all, uh, Jessica Jones is a PI investigator with super strength and the ability to jump really high. A little bit different to the comics, so she could fly, but in, in this she sort of jumps. What I do like about this is we don't really find out the origin story of why she's got these powers in these episodes. So let's talk about the main characters of Jessica Jones. Firstly, the named character Jessica Jones, played by Christine Ritter, known for her roles in Breaking Bad. Next up is the best friend of Jessica Jones, Trish Walker, played by Rachel Taylor. It was originally going to be uh, Miss Denvers, who is Miss Marvel, uh, but they had to change this due to the Marvel Cinematic Universe wanting to make its own Miss Marvel movie. Then we quite early on see another Marvel superhero by the name of Luke Cage, played by Mark Coulter. Uh, Luke Cage has unbreakable skin and super strength, and in the comic books later becomes Jessica Jones' wife. Then we go on to a character that puts a little bit of an easter egg in Jessica Jones, that's Jerry Hogarth. She plays a lawyer for a big firm, the firm is owned by Iron Fist character that you will see getting his own Marvel uh, Netflix show, so there will be a crossover there. Hogarth is played by Kerry Ann Moss. And last but not least, we have Kilgrave, the villain of this TV show, uh, played by one of my favourite British actors, uh, a man who can do no wrong in my eyes, Mr David Tennant. These make up the main characters of the Jessica Jones TV series. I don't want to go into any of the smaller characters, and I don't want to go into them in too much detail to give away spoilers. There is another character I will talk about later, but I don't want to give away spoilers for that character. Uh, I'd like to firstly say that I do believe the character casting for all of Marvel's Netflix original shows has been fantastic, and all of these actors I've just mentioned are superb in their roles and think that this is some brilliant casting uh, uh, for these roles and have helped bring Jessica Jones to life. So like in the Marvel movies and other TV series, there are lots of Easter eggs hidden within Jessica Jones. I don't want to talk about many of them, as that would lead to spoilers, but there are a couple I do want to talk about. There's a lot of hints at the Avengers and what happened in the first Avengers movie with New York 
as there is in the Daredevil TV series. My favourite Easter egg in this is something that I want to talk about because it doesn't give away the storyline too much. And it's bringing up uh, the costume of Jewel. It's in a flashback scene when Trish Walker tries to convince Jessica to become a superhero uh, called Jewel and shows this horrible costume that Jessica Jones shoots down automatically. Uh, this is a Easter egg nod to Jessica Jones in the comic books who was Jewel for a short period of time. So on to my likes and dislikes of Jessica Jones. I'm going to start with my dislikes and finish on a positive note. My dislikes of this is I do believe the storyline was drawn out for all 13 episodes. It seemed like it went on for a long period of time and felt that it could have actually finished a couple of episodes sooner. Here is where I talk about the other character I didn't want to talk about earlier. That is a character called Nuke. I don't want to talk too much about him because I don't want to give away too much of the storyline. But I felt that he needed a bigger presence in this. There seemed to be only one villain all the way through, which was Kilgrave, which limited uh, the storyline. I would have liked to send some episodes about Kilgrave, just about Kilgrave, like we saw in Daredevil, about Fisk, just to do a bit of character building because David Tennant was fantastic in this role. I do believe that the ending of this was a little predictable. I'm not going to give it away, but as you watch it, I feel that anyone that's watching it all the way through will be able to predict what's going to happen at the end. Final dislike for this will be the crossover episode in episode 13 with Daredevil. Marvel movies cross over a lot, and even in the DC TV shows of Arrow and Flash, they cross over on the final episode. We see this uh, from a crossover of Daredevil in the Jessica Jones final episode, episode 13. I was a little bit disappointed with this crossover. I thought we was going to see more of a crossover than we did. I said, I'm not going to give it away. But the crossover that we did see in this was a little bit boring. And I was expecting to see more of a bigger crossover of Welds. On to my likes. There's a lot of likes because I actually really did like this TV show. It's not on par with Daredevil. I did prefer Daredevil as a Netflix original. But I thought Jessica Jones was entertaining. Firstly, I like the dark feels to the Netflix original TV shows. We've got this in Daredevil too. They're very dark, they're very aggressive, they're very violent and bloodthirsty. We don't actually see this in the movies. The movies are sort of aimed at teenagers, kids and adults, where these TV series are aimed at adults, people that read the original comic books. The Marvel movies seem to be filmed in bright colours, attractive colours to draw kids in. Uh, these TV shows are filmed in dark, gloomy colours uh, to really show the grittiness of this. Uh, I know a lot of people say grittiness when they talk about films. This has got grit in it. It looks at problems in everyday life. It looks at alcoholism. It looks at drugs. And it also looks at support groups. We see a Kilgrave support group for people that have been traumatised for what Kilgrave has actually put them through. We also see a struggle of Jessica Jones who has the powers and doesn't know whether she should actually use them as every time she uses them it gets her into trouble. She's a, a wannabe hero that doesn't like, really like all the attention and that's what makes these TV shows really believable and really draws the fans in and it's something different from the Marvel movies and their other TV shows like Agent Car and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that still go on the, the bright, happy side of life. These are dark TV shows looking at real-life problems that we all face. So what did I think of Jessica Jones overall? I thought there were some fantastic episodes in there that kept you on the edge of the seat. And as you can tell from my likes, there are some great moments in this. I did think it was a little drawn out and could have ended a few episodes sooner. So I'm not sure how many seasons we're actually going to get to see from Jessica Jones. I personally don't think this is as good as uh, Netflix Daredevil, but I do think that this does cement Jessica Jones uh, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I think there will be more seasons, and I will think there will be a crossover with her in other Marvel uh, Netflix original TV shows. I do possibly think this is more for Marvel fans, where Daredevil seemed to cater for people that weren't Marvel fans. Uh, I would suggest people try it. Uh, out of five, I would give this a four. Let me know what you thought, your dislikes and likes about this in the comment box below. Remember, no spoilers for people, or if you are writing spoilers, I want to see capital letters spoilers, just so you don't upset anyone. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, my next episode will be Lionheart's Legends of Cinema. So stay tuned for that.